Greetings and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we talk about the appeal process, where it's headed, where it's been, and where it's going. And, you know, I thank all of my commenters yesterday for such a loving um, point of view on the motion reading um, request letter that was sent to um, from attorney Jennifer Bonjean. And uh, so after I meditated and got myself together, things came around a little bit easier. And I just said, well, it's all about Robert and it's about, you know, being there and being supportive to him and not taking it personal, not taking it personal. So I'm super excited and thankful to everyone who commented and shared their heartfelt, you know, situations and how we all are feeling as commenters and supporters. And so today I brought this out, just something short I wanted to put out there. I want you to know to please join me May the 29th, 2022 at 6 p.m. where we're gonna be doing our live and we're going to announce our three winners for the Cash App upload. Just saying thank you to those who are continually supportive of the channel. Um, we're going to have some fun things going on. We're going to have um, a trivia of those. So if you think you know R. Kelly, I got a song for you. You better know all the lyrics. <laughs> That's a little fun thing we're doing. We're, we're also going to be doing a little quiz on R. Kelly and um, some other happy things that are going to go on, some conversation that you can really, really, you know, join in on and give your opinion to, because that's what this channel is all about. Now, I'm also going to share with you a little bit of uh, and some, I guess, some video that I didn't even know existed, and I want to share something with you, and I want to get your opinion on it. So let's get into it right about now. He was one of the most talented R&B singers in music, reigning with hit songs for over 25 years. But just as night comes with day, there was a dark side filled with rumors, speculations, and charges of sexual misconduct. For the first time, witness the only complete story of R. Kelly. Hear from the family members kept secret by his own family. He was a wise man, but a broken man. He didn't get the correct help that he needed in his life. As I start growing up and more th and becoming an adult, I realized my father had a secret. He had robbed R. Kelly himself. I've done things for everybody. I'm 31 in the game. Through the storm, through the rain, through the sleep, through the tsunami of rumors and allegations and court cases. Man. Okay, y'all proof. Y'all witness to that. The lead lawyer tasked with defending unfavorable odds. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hard is this case? It's a 12. Prominent expert opinion from the tops of the psychiatric field. Honestly, I feel sad thinking about the case. I feel sad thinking about any young woman, lady who was a victim. I feel sad thinking about what R. Kelly could have gone through, potentially being sexually abused or abused as a child. I feel sad that hurt people hurt people. What if the trauma that he suffered when he was sexually abused as a child, what if that were dealt with in a really different way? Would we have this trail of tears following him? Former employees. There are no white women on this train because these accusations are false. Any man who has a history of having a drunken night out, and you know who you are, any of those women that you may have slept with or hit on at a bar can now say, that man raped me. And you will go to jail until it is proven otherwise. And those who live through what some would consider a relationship, detailing the good as well as the bad. You know, we're sitting on the couch and he's halfway asleep and everything like that. He started kissing me and stuff and just... 
Rob, our last conversation that I had with him in Chicago, you know, he inspired me and told me, Bear, just do what you want, do what makes you happy. He told me to continue to pursue my dreams, pursue whatever I want to pursue. And that's really all that I would be able to do. So don't blame me when the shooting don't stop, when kids are not obeying their parents, or when kids are listening to rap music or R&B music or sexual music that I, I put out or whatever. Blame the parents. It's, it's not about what the world thought it was about. It was about me getting relationships with my daughter. Don't paint no picture like I have not talked to you guys in over a year because I would call you guys four or five months at a time. So to believe something like that, so extreme, so bizarre, so outrageous, I just couldn't even fathom my parents, my parents believing something as bizarre as that. One of the things that's going to be said by this is precedent. And when you look at a man who's being charged like this, what does that give an ordinary man who's not of stature and don't have the ability to draw resources to have for a turn? And all of a sudden he's made with these allegations. He said by this is precedent. And when you look at a man who's being charged like this, what does that give the ordinary man who's not of stature and don't have the ability to draw resources to have four attorneys? And all of a sudden he's made with these allegations. How then does he fight it? How then does he prepare himself for this Me Too movement as we move forward? Precedents. Now, many of you know that I talk about the precedence movement in criminal justice courses and classes. And what we stated was that if something takes precedence, this is the law of what it's going to be. This is the square that the law must adhere to in order to either pursue a criminal conviction or a crime in general. So he was right when he said that uh, precedence, that's what it's about. How are we going to get our men to be able to fight um, when they don't have the funds to if the Me Too movement criticizes or abuses another um, individual, another individual? And um, I want to go a little bit deeper into Cassandra and Lisa Kelly. Um, but there was something in that video that stood out to me when the person stated that no white woman has been in the case. So you know the allegation, <laughs> you know the allegations are false. Well, on one hand, I think that maybe that's a little far stretched because of the fact that maybe he didn't want to go outside of his culture. Some men are like that. They know the rules and the laws that come with dating white women. And some of them just don't want to deal with the headache. So let's not get it twisted here. Um, maybe the white woman was not, um, he wasn't attracted to the white woman. And maybe that's another reason why this has gone the way that it has. Because there's so much jealousy and envy over the fact that he didn't choose them. You know, how many superstars go to Caucasian women <laughs> all the time. You have never, ever, ever heard that R. Kelly went that route. So that is something that um, I wanted to bring up. I also ran into another video. Um, these were given to me in the text yesterday that um, said that I should share this with you guys. So here, here's, here's another one, and it's the one from back in the day, but I feel it is prevalent to what has taken place if you look at uh, what's going on right now in the case of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So let's listen to this. Why haven't we heard from R. Kelly himself? Well, it's, it's kind of tough because it's a legal issue as well. 
you know, for him to speak um, when his when his attorneys are telling him to just let them process everything, get everything together. If he if he speak anyway, then he's going against the people that he's paying, and so it, it's really hard for him to kind of come out and just speak, you know, about an issue that's that's this deep because you figure it's it's it's, it's lawsuits and it's and it's all kind of things that's going on behind the scenes that if he speak, it can mess up his 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 money. It can mess up everything. But he's been quiet this entire time, so not only did it mess up his money. Pleading the fifth really and truly created this fiasco. Um, I don't know if fighting back could have been better. What's your thoughts? Let's listen. And so right now he just has to follow his, his attorney's lead and he got to trust him and trust the process. From your personal relationship with him, how do you think he feels about all this that's going on? Oh, it's killing him. It, 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 it hurts him because he, no one wants anybody to think that all of this is, because the people, the person that they're describing in this um, lifetime thing, um, this surviving R. Kelly thing, they, they, they describing Satan himself, Lucifer. And that's not who he is. He's far from that. And so it's kind of it's kind of tough to hear what people saying about you and you want to say something because of the, the street party, you want to just lash out. But the business party, you can't lash out. So he's in a, like a tough situation right now where he would, he would love to be the one talking. But it's kind of difficult right now to talk when you have seven or eight lawyers telling you not to say anything and, and let them do their job. So he has to trust the process and let them do their job. It's a direct question. Is R. Kelly... A child molester? No. Far from it. Have you ever seen him with any girls you know to be underage? No. No. He's far from a child molester. He's, he, he's around women flock to him. He's a celebrity. You know, so you're going to have all kind of people coming at him. But he's not a child molester and, and he don't mess with underage girls. Let's play a toilet. What would you consider underage? I consider anything under 18 underage. 17, you 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 you, you kind of fight the, the 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 barrel with it, but you know legally they say 17 is illegal. But I, I haven't even seen that. Why do you think it's so many women coming after him in these stories? Oh, it's easy. It's a ching ching check. You know, right now. You can just say that, that he bumped you. Now that is coming straight from R. Kelly's manager speaking on his court case. Who was his manager? Can anybody post that in the live chat or the comment box? Um, as far as the manager was concerned, who this guy is right here. Um, Wow, you got ex-crisis manager Daryl Johnson stealing millions from R. Kelly. I mean, all this stuff, the stealing, the lying, the cheating, the conniving. But let's listen to what R. Kelly had to say around this time. And I think it was right before they indicted him. Let's listen. Because when you come together, hold hands, and walk through the city, and let all the children see their favorite heroes all come together, that's more of an inspiration than just Batman by himself. It's more than an inspiration than just Superman by himself. And that's why I was telling the fellas over there, you know, if we come together and walk through the light, walk through the cave of darkness, not only will we come out on top or shine a light on us. We will inspire millions of kids around the world to shine a light on themselves because I believe that in the midst of this life, we are in the midst of failure. The good news 
is that in the midst of this life, we are also in the midst of victories. And it is only how you handle your struggle and what you go through. So that was coming out um, three years ago um, that R. Kelly was in the midst of uh, talking about putting the nonprofits together. So I just wanted to share that with you today and get on and give you a small bit of hope because I know that it was very heavy yesterday with the um with the segment that we did relating to the letter to Bonjean, but that's the only way that R. Kelly is going to actually be able to support himself. They've shut him down and muted him down so much until uh, the way that Bonjean, attorney Bonjean had to do it was more or less say, listen, we have to allow him to express himself in satisfying his own sentencing, um, you know, to work within that and her as his attorney being able to work through that. And it's really sad because most like Steven Greenberg just said, you know, this was a lot. It, it was too much for him to handle. And yeah, when the money's gone, then the representation is gone. Um, I thought that there was a a statement to where you are supporting your client as much as you can. And that's what she's doing as well. You know, who's paying her right now? Some people are saying Bill Cosby. I don't know. I don't believe in the whole gossip hype of it. Unless Bill Cosby comes out and says, yes, I'm paying for this. Then, I mean, what? Anyone can say anything. But the reality of um, of this is just, yeah, the t the, this timeline and the mitigation expert testimony and not being able to get in there and do what he needed to do for his own sentencing opportunity to save himself that's wrong you guys it's wrong but that's something that was yesterday so yeah I'm just hopping on to say come on and join me um Sunday at 6 p.m so we can determine our three winners for the cash app upload I know $25 isn't a lot however it is something that I'm choosing to do for my um top YouTubers, commenters, and supporters of the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel. And we thank you and appreciate you for just giving us the love that's needed all around the world because many people watch this channel and when they look at what could be going on, what is going on, and why it's going on, you know, it's R. Kelly is still bringing people together in the backyard parties. You know what I mean? But it's more on the legal side now. It's no, you know, having fun, fun, fun. But let's see how we can get down and still be a community working together to support that beautiful person, Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. So we thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.